Good Wednesday morning. This is Jim. Thank you for checking in. And this is uh, the midweek message for the Harris Chapel Church and anybody else caring to watch on my Facebook Live. One week from tomorrow is Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. In fact, uh, probably my favorite holiday, not only because of all the food and the football, but the fact that the family gets together. We share those moments. By the way, we had a wonderful service this past Sunday, a great group, a great uh, uh, attendance, participation, and God really helped us in the message. We talked about praying at all times, Ephesians six eighteen. as we were finishing up the uh, armor of God. We talked about praying all kinds of prayers in the Spirit on all occasions for all people. So I had a number of books available. I just want to share with you. We have several left out on the counter. If you want to come by our office and pick up one, you're welcome to read it, bring it back, keep it, share it, whatever you want to do. We just want to put tools in your hands. There are books dealing with prayer. One that you'll recognize, some of you will recognize, A Serious Call to a Devout and Holy Life by William Law, The Helper by Catherine Marshall. She talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I had the privilege of working with and knowing her son, uh, Peter Marshall, the son of the uh, Catherine Marshall's husband, Peter Marshall, who was the chaplain of the Senate, uh, got to know him back in Burleson, Texas. He came through for a series of meetings, and what a great historian. In fact, we may mention something briefly about that concerning Thanksgiving. Here's another book entitled The Kneeling Christian, uh, A New Testament Walk with Oswald Chambers. These are all books available. If you want to come by the office, they'll be on the counter. Take one, use them, pray. Prayer is the key. My Daily Meditation by John Henry Jowett, a great classic. Becoming a Woman of Prayer by Cynthia Heald. Three-Minute Devotions for Guys, that's for teenage guys. Praying Circles Around Your Children by Mark Batterson. Alive to God Through Prayer, a Manual on the Practices of Prayer by Donald Dimery. And a classic these days, The Prayer of Jabez by Bruce Wilkinson. I just, we want to put these tools into your hands because prayer is essential. It's what helps the armor really be effective in your life and my life. We can have the armor of God. We can talk about the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the belt of truth, feet shod with the gospel, the preparation of peace, breastplate of righteousness, all those pieces of armor. But unless we're praying, they're not effective. Let me just say that again. Unless we're praying, the armor of God in your life and my life is not effective. Now, let's talk about today, and I want to give you another, like we did last Wednesday, I want to give you another little kind of a preview, just a snippet of what's going to be happening this Sunday as we talk about Thanksgiving, giving thanks. If you have a Bible, I want you to look with me over in the Old Testament to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. 1 Chronicles 16. This is an exciting passage of Scripture. This is when David, in chapter 15, is bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. And as he's bringing it in, I love it at the end of the chapter, it talks about how he's dancing before the Lord and praising the Lord and how some that are watching are rather despised. Uh, but it's just exciting because the Ark is coming. And in chapter 16 of 1 Chronicles, David, as the Ark is brought into the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, David appoints people there not just to guard the ark, but to use that, its presence, the time there. It says, in fact, he appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in this manner. In fact, they had the ark, and as they were there with the ark, they were saying, you know, we just got to continually praise God and thank him for this ark. Let me just read the scripture in First Chronicles 16. We'll start at verse 8. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek his face always. He goes on, remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, the judgments he pronounced, you his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord, our God. He is the Lord, our God. Our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. I, tell you, I, I really just have to kind of move on because it would be so easy for me just to read through these verses and stop and just be so inclined to bring a word concerning what I'm reading. But I want to get on down to verse, let's say, I don't know, let's, let's get on to verse 34 because this is the verse 
we're going to highlight Sunday morning along with a passage over in the New Testament. It says this, 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Are you ready? 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. See that, I want you to think about that as we enter into the season of giving thanks a week from tomorrow, like I said, is Thanksgiving Day. I want you to think about what it means to be a thankful people. What if you and I, not just on that day of counting our blessings and thinking about all the great things that we should be thankful for and going around the table, which I hope you do, and just have different ones in the family say, I'm thankful for this and that and the other. And usually it's things like good health, uh, family, uh, job. Obviously, we're thankful for, if we're people of faith, we're thankful for Jesus. There's just a number of things that we could just count our blessings, as the old song says, and say, I am thankful for this and this and this and this. I love it how on social media there are people that are taking a day each day during the month of November saying, I am thankful for. And on one day it could be family. On one day it could be their local church where they fellowship and they're gaining knowledge of the word and, and strength from other believers. It could be their job. The list is on and on. But I love what this scripture says. It gives, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. A couple of days back, my dad turned 92 years of age. Many of people would know him as Bob Ballinger, the old fisherman himself. Dad was known as a coach. He was known as a school counselor. He was known as an administrator. But more than anything, he's been known <laughs> over his life as a great fisherman. In fact, I shared with you the other day when I called home and talked with dad on his birthday he was or on veterans day he was more excited talking about going fishing last tuesday than he was about what i was talking about concerning veterans day he loves to fish every time i talk to dad somewhere in the conversation he'll say this i don't know how i deserve it i really don't but the lord has truly blessed your mom and i we're blessed somewhere every time we talk that comes up we're blessed Recently, he said this. He's used this a couple times. We're blessed beyond what we deserve, but not blessed beyond what we appreciate. I thought that was good. Let me tell you that again. We are blessed beyond what we deserve, but not blessed beyond what we appreciate. Wow, that is so good. Again, here's David and his men in 1 Chronicles 16. They brought the ark into the place of worship, and they're so excited. And I just love as he gives them this litany of things to talk about in this prayer. He says this, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Do you know that today? Just like my dad tells me every time we talk, I'm blessed beyond what I deserve. It's true, folks. We are blessed. I was reading this and preparing for Sunday's sermon, and on Monday it hit me as I was looking through this. You know, David, even though he had the ark, and even though he was a great king and a mighty warrior, he didn't get to build the temple. God told him, he said, you, you just do your part, and down the road Solomon will build the temple. Now David could have whined and complained, said, oh, I want to build the temple. This may be a tangent that you don't care to go on, but let me just tell you this. Sometimes in life, we look at what we don't have. And David could have said, why couldn't I build the temple? I know the temple's going to be great and glorious. The temple, 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 temple. But you know what David had? David had the ark. David had that piece of material that embodied the presence of God himself. The ark. The ark of the covenant. David had the ark. Sometimes, this is one of the lessons I want to give you, and then we're going to give you one more and go. Sometimes in life, we complain about the things we don't have, the things we want, the place we'd like to live, the car we'd like to drive, the job we'd like to have, the friends we wish we were acquainted with, and we moan and gripe and complain about what we don't have. David had the ark. As I look on into the New Testament, as I read carefully the Gospels, and I read the writings of Paul, you know what, folks? You and I have the ark. The very presence of God himself, the creator of the universe. If you and I will yield our lives to Jesus, 
if we will allow him to come into our hearts and lives. I think about the Christmas song, and we'll talk about it here in a few weeks. O little town of Bethlehem, you know, cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. That's what the creator of the universe wants to do. He wants to literally become the ark in your life. It talks about that in John chapter 1, how he came to walk among us, how he came to live among us, and in the original language, how he came to tabernacle in our lives. The creator of the universe wants to come and be the ark in your life. I learned this just recently in the Old Testament, when Noah built the ark, the actual ark where all the animals went in and were, were rescued from the flood, they put pitch on the inside and on the outside of the ark. It was not only to seal that gopher wood to make sure that water didn't get in and, and they would drown or the ark would sink. It was also a sign in the original language, in the original context, the pitch was the sign of God's protection on the inside and on the out. Ark of the Covenant. This ark in the New Testament where God himself wants to dwell in you and me. We're going to talk about it at Christmas. Emmanuel, which means God with us. God in us. You may not get the temple in your life. You may not get that amazing job with the corner uh, office that lets you view the city. You may not get that great raise or be the president or the CEO of that company. But wherever you are, you are the best that you can be because God is at work in you. He wants to be at work in you. The choice is yours. The ark, as David had the ark, can be a reality in your life. And can you imagine those guys that were, that was their job? Okay, all day long, we just want you to hang around here and just praise God. Just praise God all day long. Here's some words you can use. You know, just give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Can you imagine if you would take that attitude between now and a week from tomorrow and just say, you know what, every day, not just on Thanksgiving Day, not just in this month of November of giving thanks, but 365. I have a gun, it's a six hour pistol, it's called the P365. And the reason they call it that is because they believe that it is so small and comfortable to carry in your pocket, I'm not going to show it to you but to carry it in your pocket 365 days a year. It's not cumbersome. She has nine millimeter uh, rounds. It's a beautiful pistol. Love to hold it, love to shoot it, very accurate. But the deal is this, it's a 365 thing. I believe that you and I can be people of Thanksgiving 365 days a year. It'd be interesting if you took time and Googled, you know, we Google everything else. What if we just Googled giving thanks? And just start to list those things that are the blessings in our life. As dad tells me, I'm blessed way beyond what I deserve and right to the level for which I am grateful. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. His mercy endures forever. His, his mercy, as the, as the song says, is morning, every morning his mercies are made new. I'm going to give you one more thing, and then we're going to pray and go in this midweek gathering. We talk about giving thanks for all we have. What if we made a list? And I'm giving you a little precursor of what I'm going to tell the folks on Sunday. What if we made a list and gave thanks for those things that we got rid of this past year? Over in Hebrews, it talks about running the race. I think it's chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 about throwing all those things that would hinder us, that would hold us back, that would hold us down in running the race. What if we just took time today, tomorrow, and a week from tomorrow, and just say, Lord, I give thanks that this is no longer in my life. You have weaned me away from this addiction. You have delivered me from this. You have taken me out of that bad situation. I want to give thanks for what I don't have this year. Hey, how about that? Think about that one. I appreciate you checking in. I'm grateful for you. I love you. And I love talking about Thanksgiving. I heard a preacher the other day says, don't preach about stuff that you don't possess. Don't give to somebody else what you don't have. Folks, I am a grateful person. 
When I talk about giving thanks and being a thankful person, it just flows out of my life because God has blessed me. And maybe it's something my mom and dad taught me way beyond what I deserve. And just to the level for that which I am grateful. Come by the office, would you? The office is open throughout the week. You'll see it's the fellowship building behind the sanctuary building. We've got these books laid out on the counter. Get one of these books. Learn more about prayer. Practice prayer more. Let's be people of prayer. I heard T.D. Jake say it this morning. We should pray so much that we need to use chapstick. <laughs> I love it. Thanks for checking in. Let's pray, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Our Father, would you pray with me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Have a great Wednesday and have a great rest of your week.